Travelling allows us to explore and experience the planet's greatest wonders, but it is also significantly contributing to its destruction. However, it's not all bad news, there are ways to lower your impact and in this video I'm going to discuss how to avoid harmful emissions altogether, reduce them when necessary and offset them to help give back. At the end of 2018, I uploaded my short film about climate change and questioning my own hypocritical environmentalism. Obviously, I recommend watching the whole film by clicking up here, but basically I committed to making my lifestyle and content more sustainably focused. This video is kicking off that process with probably one of the biggest areas of impact, which is tackling the greenhouse gas emissions from travel. Whilst I'll fully explain how to reduce and properly offset your carbon footprint later in the video, it's worth starting by properly introducing and discussing the subject of offsetting first as it is somewhat controversial. Offsetting is the process of investing in environmental projects that help lower carbon emissions, equal to the value of the emissions you have produced, to in theory balance out your carbon footprint. It is nowhere near as expensive or as hard as you might think, so on the surface it sounds like a great way to easily lower your impact, however it isn't that simple unfortunately. There have been many questions over the effectiveness of these schemes to properly reduce emissions, however their accountability and processes have improved a lot over the years as they have become more widely used. For instance, you may think planting trees is the obvious offsetting option because they actively remove CO2 from the atmosphere. However, trees only store a limited amount of carbon temporarily and may fail to grow or even be cut down, releasing it all again. So it's far more effective to invest in energy efficiency and renewable projects that help to stop emissions entering the atmosphere altogether. These have a more permanent effect as well as often offering additional social benefits such as tackling air pollution and energy poverty in developing countries. As a result, the pricing of some offsetting schemes now reflects this thinking. Trees cost a lot more as more need to be grown to achieve the same offset value. Projects also now have standards and certification systems to guarantee the value and effectiveness of carbon offsets. However, the main issue with offsetting is whether it allows people to simply offset their guilt rather than their emissions. Does offsetting them allow people to carry on as usual, thinking they're helping the environment but not actually making the necessary changes to their habits? One example of this I noticed very recently is that Ryanair has introduced a checkbox during their checkout process, which gives you the option to donate one pound towards offsetting your carbon footprint. Whilst they are at least acknowledging the harmful impact of their industry, I feel this is a bit of greenwashing. That one pound is nowhere near enough to offset the carbon produced from that booking. However, it is likely the individual purchasing the plane ticket doesn't realise this, and so thinks they can carry on booking further flights under the false assumption that they have mitigated their flight's damage. So whilst I don't really agree with that specific example of offsetting, I do think the more accountable independent schemes have an important role to play. There are areas of society such as flying where technology currently doesn't exist to do it without releasing carbon. This means we all need to reduce the flights we take and other emissions where possible, but there are cases where there just simply isn't an alternative and that's where offsetting can have huge benefits. Obviously, in an ideal sustainable world, all flights would be grounded tomorrow, but that realistically isn't going to happen. So instead, I believe a world where all flights are offset is far better than one where we carry on as usual doing nothing, particularly when that offsetting is already raising millions for environmental and social causes. Basically, offsetting is a great tool to be used alongside reducing your carbon footprint, but not instead of it. Bearing that all in mind, here are some practical tips to avoid and reduce your flight emissions before we get on to how to offset those that are unavoidable. First up is obviously not to fly at all. This might sound drastic, but actually in many cases it turns out to be a more attractive option than flying. We took a laid back train and ferry combo to the Netherlands on our last trip, sleeping overnight on the boat so we were ready to explore the next day and used roughly 80% less CO2 versus flying. Trains are one of the most efficient forms of travel. Some are even close to carbon neutral if using renewable electricity, 
and Europe in particular benefits from brilliant rail infrastructure for the most part. A quick two hour flight might sound easier, but once you start adding in several hours of waiting and security at airports at both ends, travel to and from the airports, plus all the restrictions and stress of baggage, you realize how much better train travel can be. Having a more spacious and comfortable seat on a train as you zip from one city centre to another can often be just as quick and cheap as budget airlines too, particularly with all the added extras those airlines now charge. You could even break up your trip for lengthier journeys, for instance stopping off and quickly exploring a German or Swiss city for one night on your way down to Italy can allow you to visit smaller towns and pass through amazing alpine scenery you may never have seen otherwise. To find out everything you could possibly need to know about train travel, head to seat61.com. This brilliant site run full-time by train enthusiast Mark Smith has the answers to basically any question you could ask about train travel, whether it is simply timetabling and routes or even tips about station facilities and when the best time to book is. Obviously there are situations where air travel is the only real viable option. But there are actually a few things you can do to reduce your emissions of those flights before we get on to offsetting them. Atmosphere is a non-profit organisation focused on making air travel more climate friendly. They produce a comprehensive annual index of the carbon efficiency of 200 airlines. They do this by comparing everything from the type of aircraft, engine and seats to the occupancy of cargo and passengers on board. I'll drop a link down below to the 2018 index which you can use to find the most efficient airlines to fly with. Bear in mind that budget airlines such as EasyJet and AirAsia are listed under separate index to the main table because of factors that mean they aren't directly comparable. What is interesting about Atmosphere's report is that it also highlights the efficiency of different lengths of flight. Because all passenger flights, regardless of length, must climb to a minimum altitude during which the most fuel is burnt, short haul are vastly more inefficient than middle and long haul. This is quite good as short haul is the easiest to replace with other methods of transport like rail and road we discussed earlier. Picking a better airline isn't always a realistic option, but there are several fairly easy things you can do regardless of airline to improve your own flight efficiency. Taking direct flights is always better than stopovers because it obviously requires less flights and therefore takeoffs and landings. If you can, try taking a longer period off to explore several places in one region, instead of flying back and forth multiple times. For instance, if you are visiting Australia, then taking off New Zealand on the same trip will be better than flying back again all the way around the world to do it separately. Likewise, taking one extended tour of several European countries is better than lots of weekend breaks throughout the year. Obviously, doing this has the added benefit of being more economical than paying for multiple flights back and forth all the time. One thing that you are probably already doing which has a big effect is flying economy. The reason this is more efficient is that it takes up less space on the aircraft, meaning more passengers and cargo can fit in. So once you have tried to do the best you can with all these tips, then it's time to offset your emissions. Because of the advancement in the schemes, this is actually one of the easiest processes in this video. As mentioned, some are better than others with different approaches for both calculation and mitigation. I would avoid any offsetting airlines offer you directly, or at least only do them in addition to the independent schemes. They're often not very transparent and don't equal the true value of your flight's impact as we saw earlier with the Ryanair example. One website I like in particular is carbonfootprint.com because they simplify the whole process from calculation to purchase of verified carbon offsets. Just head to their calculator for individuals, click on the flights tab and enter the details of your flight and how many took it. As an example, I'm going to offset the flights we took to Croatia last July again. Make sure you tick the box to include radioactive forcing. This takes into account the fact that planes release their emissions at higher altitudes where they have a greater effect on global warming. Once you have added your flights, you can click offset now to see your carbon offset options. As I mentioned earlier, some projects like tree planting cost more than others to make sure they offer adequate carbon reduction value. Different projects also have different social benefits for different regions of the world, so read up on them and choose your favourite. 
you can then check out just as simple as booking the flights themselves. You even get a nice certificate to acknowledge your donation. You will have likely noticed the other tabs of the calculator that allow you to work out your full carbon footprint from every aspect of your life, which is a great next step if you want to do more. Maybe look at doing one big calculation annually, which can motivate you to reduce your emissions over each year and bring down the price of your overall carbon offset. In summary, I return to my previous statement. Offsetting is a great tool to be used alongside reducing your carbon footprint, but not instead of it. So to reduce your carbon footprint whilst traveling, seriously consider alternatives to flying, particularly train travel, which can be just as quick cheap and far more relaxing. If you need to fly, then you can use Atmosphere's airline index to find the most efficient airlines. Bunch your travel to similar regions together, take direct flights when possible, and fly in economy. Then use sites like carbonfootprint.com to calculate and purchase carbon offsets with verifiable and effective projects, maybe even donating extra to become carbon positive rather than just carbon neutral. Thanks for watching, I hope this first sustainably focused advice video was useful and I look forward to bringing you many more. Please consider subscribing to get notified about these and help me spread these positive messages.